Depending on who you are, compliance may be an option or frankly, it may not. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's educational lesson comes to us from West Sussex in England in the UK. Nanook Professional Protective Cases are waterproof, shockproof, and dustproof. They're the cases I trust to protect my valuables when traveling. So these guys are robbing this store. They came in a little bit ago with some baseball bats and they are just ripping this store apart, stealing cigarettes and liquor and stuff like that. Now there's a couple of cops that were actually in the parking lot, see them coming out and the dude actually rips one of the officers out of the car and you see one of the robbers there, Owen Smith, and approaches the car and attacks the constable and rips her out of the car. And her other partner comes around the car as well and is like, oh, what are we going to do here? Looks like a bystander in shorts comes on there and another one. And now we see some other officers coming up, one with a baton. And finally, a couple of them are going to run up with the tasers. They're going to be able to get this guy with the taser and get him into custody via the polyester pileup. And that is where this one ends. Boy, I tell you what, those guys had no respect whatsoever. If you want to get better, not only at the skills and the plan, but the attitude of self-defense, join us at the Active Self-Protection National Conference, September 27, 28, 29, outside of Manhattan, Kansas. Link in the description with all the details. It is the best training value that you will get all year long and all for a good cause. Out of today's video, I want to think about the value of compliance inside the store. I also want to think about the need to fight it out if you are an officer and why your empty handed skills are so critical. So this part in the robbery, man, we didn't get a whole lot of great footage on this one that was released to the media. So there's some stuff here about compliance. The clerk complied. They didn't beat him up. Okay, fine. That's great. But now let's think about the officers here. Again, they're out on routine patrol. They, they you know, come into this gas station and they find the robbery in progress. And this is an interesting thing with police, right? With police, we actually force them into violent confrontations. As private citizens, we don't have that responsibility. We could have just gotten the heck out of there. But as police officers, they have to stay in these kind of situations and they're, they're forced in them. That's their job. So that's why we give them protection, why we give some significant training. But I do want to say here, lock your doors. Notice here, the fact that her door was open lets this guy open the door and get her in a significant amount of trouble. Can't say enough. Lock your doors. Even those of us who are in police cars, and I get it, I'm stepping on police standard operating procedures here because you want to be able to get out of the car quickly or whatever. But as a general rule, if your door is open, that, that is not a barrier to somebody else coming in. Next, we see the officer here put her hands up and start with a barrier. And that's not a bad thing as well, but having a high level of empty handed skills, and I think especially maybe once your skills are up at a certain level, doing a little bit of work from inside your car so you know how to fend somebody off who's trying to get you out of a car or get into the car that you're in, is important and knowing how to keep them off of you and keep them away from you. So you see the officer here, she is leaned back using her legs and trying to get this guy off of her. Yeah, and that's a good strategy. As far as her partner trying to get out of the car and get around to the guy, probably a good strategy as well. But one thing that I will say here is that size does matter, strength does matter. And there's really no working around that. A large, strong person is going to be able to throw around a smaller, not as strong person all day long. Having good technique though, and having tools at your disposal to use can significantly alter that and those force multipliers do matter. Now then, she's out on the ground. Emotional fitness time. He has grabbed her up and tossed her out of this car to steal their police car to get away from this robbery. But now let's think about this. She has just been ragdolled by this guy, beat up pretty good and thrown out. This is where emotional fitness comes into play. The ability to stay emotionally present, to stay in control and to feel like I can handle this situation and I can still protect myself. And she did a very good job of that here. You're gonna see her pop right back up and say, not today, buddy, I'm going right back after it and I'm gonna fight you. And that's great emotional fitness and an absolute attitude of the core of active self-protection. Now let's think about the bystanders coming in here. Get a couple of guys, one of them is in shorts. I, I think the other one here doesn't look like he's a uniformed officer to me, he might be at this point. But as a bystander, you gotta ask yourself the question, which instances am I going to step in for? What kind of fights am I willing to get myself involved in? And I think having those done in advance is very important. And for many of us, we'd say, listen, I will step in and help a police officer who is in trouble, who is being beat up, because that's safer not only for the officer, but for the perp. And those kind of things can be very important. And knowing how to do those and to approach an officer in a way that you can ask for help is important. I don't think going cowabunga over the A pillar here was probably the best place. Now backup officers are gonna arrive pretty quick, okay, fine. But being able to identify yourself to an officer that you are here to help, officer, I'm here to help you, can I help you? Do you need my help? Is wise, especially now not here in the UK, but in the United States, if you're armed, you wanna identify yourself. Hey, officer, I'm armed, I can help you, can I help you? 
Now notice the officer here shows up and he's got a baton in his hand. Now I'm gonna say in these kinds of close environments, I don't think the baton is a very useful tool. And the reason for that is it needs a lot of space in order to use it effectively. So this officer is gonna to have to come in here and be able to swing it. And when the guy's sitting inside the car door, not really going to be able to do that. Now officers use a baton all the time to break out car windows, very difficult to do as well. But to use that to actually disarm a perp or use it especially in a non-lethal way, very, very difficult in this kind of environment. I think close to useless. These other officers, on the other hand, they show up with tasers and I don't need that much space to use a taser, just need a little bit of distance. They're able to get that and get this guy in custody. So one last thing here is to make sure that you know how to work as a team, you know how to communicate well so that each person is doing something good. You're not duplicating each other's efforts or thwarting each other's efforts. The officers in the end did a good job of that. Let's all learn about car safety here, about keeping our doors locked, about having some empty handed skills in our car and about good emotional fitness to cover our ASP.